I've got my diploma or certificate or degree or whatever. Go me, go me, go me. But then uh, what do I do now? Do I start a job? Do I go get another degree? Do I start a company? Well, certain personality types lend themselves to certain career paths better than other. If you want to find out which career path is best for you, stay tuned. Career choices. What is the best for you? I don't know, I'm not you, but pay attention to the next part of this video and you'll find out more about you, the self-awareness piece, which is key to all of this. This slide next. Outgoing folks and reserve folks. So when I talk about this outgoing personality style, these folks are fast-paced, involved, energetic, optimistic, positive, enthusiastic, woo! Take the leg by the tail, just sling it around and throw it somewhere. When conflict comes along, however, though, they focus on talking things out. Hey, Alicia, how are you? Hey, can I help you? Can I help you? Hey, hey, you good? You good? You good? You good? You good? And she wants to slap my hand away. And so if she's more reserved person, she's going to be a little bit slower paced. Now, that doesn't mean she works slowly. That means just she's slow to act or get engaged because she wants to think things through before she speaks. So they're cautious folks. They're concerned. They're reluctant, critical thinkers and always discerning. And when conflict comes along for them, they focus on thinking things through. Hmm. Hmm. Should I? Nope. But don't have all the facts yet. And that's their mentality. All right. So where are you on that scale of outgoing versus reserved? If you're outgoing, kind of remember that I'm towards the top of the screen. If you're reserved, you're more towards the bottom of the screen. We're going to divide you into people person or if you're more of a task oriented person. People-oriented folks are all about caring and sharing and relationships and emotions and feelings and friendships. They focus on the opinions of others and how they feel. So we tend to be pretty emotional, and I am very much a people-oriented person. I'm an emotional guy. You know, I cried during the movie Frozen. Nobody does that, but I did because my daughter was there, and she's going to have a boyfriend one day and get married. And, and she said, pull it together, Dad. Anyway, because she's more of a task-oriented person. She's all about procedure and function and forms and programs and processes and analytics. She focuses on getting things done at the end of the day. So now you're finding yourself in the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen and you're on the left side or right side. So let's define a little bit about what each one of these quadrants mean. So we've got these outgoing task oriented people. We're going to call you high D's or dominant styles. Never met a challenge you couldn't face. Love to be in charge. Take charge mentality. Then we've got our outgoing and people oriented folks. Those are our inspiring styles. We're going to call you high I's. Just love influencing others oozing charisma all the time, just like to be in and around people, you're all about having fun. And then we have our supportive styles. Those are our reserved and people oriented. Kind folks make super friends. They're great listeners, give you the shirt off their back. They're just wonderful people and the glue of any organization. And then we have our high C's, which are our reserved and task oriented people. These folks are analytical. They are, think about accountants, lawyers, doctors, those kind of people who are just high level thinkers. These people are the E.F. Hutton of the disc world. If you remember the old commercial, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. That's right, people listen. So C's don't really say a whole lot most times, but when they do, they've really thought through what they have to say. And it's usually like, oh, pretty epic in terms of the, the results of that. Now, we're all a unique blend of these four traits. So we all have a little bit of D, a little bit of I, a little bit of S, and a little bit of C, some in more categories than others. I'm an IS, you know, my I is really, really high, my S is really high, and then everything else kind of falls towards the bottom of the, of the scale. So there are tons of things when choosing a career, and most of them you didn't find out back when you were in high school what job fair day, because you know, the lawyers come in, the doctors, and, and all that kind of stuff, and all those things are great, but there are so many things out there that we don't even know exist. But Let's talk about just work environment. That's one particular spot we can start. D's and I's want to be in a work environment that's fast paced around others so they can be interacting with people, bouncing ideas off of one another, that kind of thing. S's and C's, however, not so much. They like to have a little bit more isolation. Now, S's are people oriented folks, so they like being around others, but they don't necessarily like to talk a lot. And C's, Man, if they could work by themselves in a cubicle in the middle of Iceland or Antarctica or somewhere, they're by themselves, they would love that because isolation is great for them. 
So that environment is very, very important, but also we need to find out what percentage of the population you are in so you can find out where you best need to be when surrounded by others if you are in a work environment that has tons of people in it, let's say like in a call center or in a sales situation. So what percentage of the population does each style represent? Well, if we look, we'll have our D's at 10%, 10% of the population, the smallest percentage. And it's usually this time during the video where I stop and take a little moment to say a little prayer and thank God that there's only 10% of the population that are high D's because they are seriously on fire about execution and getting things done. Then we look at our eyes. Our eyes are 25 to 30% of the population, the fun people, the people that bring the creativity and the spontaneity into the world. Then our biggest percentage belongs to our high S's. S is at 30 to 35% of the population. Those folks who love harmony, the peacemakers. Ah, we love our high S's. Now, if you would, take a moment to imagine a world where we switch the D and the S. If D's were 30% of the population and those S's were only 10%, what kind of world would that be? we'd be on like World War 17 by now because there's just too many people trying to be in charge. So there's a balance there. So 10% on those Ds and thank God, 30 to 35% on those Ss. And then our Cs, those analytical folks, 20 to 25% of the population. So your accountants, your lawyers, rocket science, engineers, all those people live in that C world. Uh, thankfully, we have a lot of those folks because they bring order to the chaos of some of those other styles. So you're a D and you're trying to career plan. Well, C's and D's are on that task side. So from the D perspective, D's are risk takers. They want to be rewarded for their successes, that individual success. They gotta be moving fast, talking fast, going fast. So from that standpoint, a fast paced, somewhat stressful environment, something that challenges a D is always gonna be a good starting place. So if that sounds like you, choose those careers. I's are great at influencing others. So things like sales, acting, teaching, consulting, all those things work great because they get to express themselves and tell you how they feel. So if you're an I, you know you wanna be expressing yourself. Don't be caught in a cubicle, get out there and amongst other people and tell them how you feel. S's are great listeners. So places like healthcare, counseling, maybe even education, places where they can lift others up from a situation where they might not otherwise be as happy or successful as they could be. S's find a lot of value and a lot of energy from helping others. So S's support any kind of role where you're helping others be better than themselves, that's the key for you. And C's, you analytical folks, engineers, accountants, doctors, lawyers, it's all about the process, it's all about the why, understanding the why in any situation. So if you're a person that loves organization, that loves making lists, that loves th doing things methodically with a process, those kind of positions are for you, you're probably a high C. Here's where the self-awareness piece comes in. Not everyone is wired to go out there and be a high-performing salesperson in a pressure-packed environment, but you have to understand yourself. I can't compare myself if I'm an S to a D. A D's gonna be going really fast, 90 miles an hour, and get energy from that, and that's just gonna stress me out and wear me out, and I'm gonna be leaving that job in three weeks. I just won't last that long. So stop comparing yourself to others when you lack the self-awareness and the social awareness to know what style is he and what, he's just gifted in that area. I'm gifted in other areas. The key to career success is finding something that you would do for free and getting up every morning and doing it. You're gonna get passion from it. You wanna come home tired in a good way, not tired in, oh, I'm exhausted. I never wanna go back there again. It's more of a, man, if I only had two more hours, how many more people could I have impacted? How many more lives could I have touched? That's the key to finding a career that's gonna stay in a long time. I's and S's are about succeeding in their relationships. D's and C's focus on accomplishments. And again, neither one is right or wrong. Everyone's just a little bit different. Now, I hate the phrase, you do you. I just don't like that at all. But in this particular situation, it makes a lot of sense. From a career success, a career planning standpoint, you've got to do you. You can't do what your mom or dad did or what your brother or sister did. You've got to find out where your passions are. If you like music, Maybe you want to be a band director. Maybe you want to be a piano teacher. Maybe you want to be a perf piano performance major. Maybe you want to be an instrument repair person and work at the shop and you get to play with your hands. So all those things matter when it comes to choosing a career because quite frankly, nobody fits the career of you except you. You're that unique individual. So we stop and we think and a lot of this makes sense, Alex, but how do I know what I do or what I'm passionate at or what I'm aligned with? Well, 
first step in that is self-awareness and self-awareness comes from having some kind of tool to give you that objective data. For us, we use an assessment. I've got a link in the description below for our assessment tools and our page. We've got assessments for teens, adults, kids, things you can do at work, if you're a salesperson, all those kinds of things. And so what that allows you to do is have this objective data that says, hey, here's how you're predisposed. And just for you guys, my audience out there, my viewers, if you'll email me once you have that assessment and say, hey, Alex, I'm a CD, what careers best suit me? I can give you a link that will take you to a website. You plug in your assessment code and it will spit out for you a list of potential careers that suit your personality to a T. So that you can kind of custom make your decisions and the path that you follow from this point on forward in terms of, hey, I'm in the right spot already. Woohoo! I'm set up for success. Or gosh knows, I'm not even close to the right career. I need to be thinking about what education, what other things I need to do to get the job done. But all that starts whoop, when we roll back and take that assessment, which is down below in the comments. Leave me any kind of questions you have. But again, in the comments section or send me an email once you've taken that assessment and I'll put you on the career path that will get you super passionate, getting out of your seat every day, getting out of bed every day, giving back to the world and making this world a better place, which is what we all want to do, ultimately. See you in the next video.